Good morning. My name is Theron Prozzi. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at the uh, Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. I'd like to welcome all ladies and gentlemen this morning. And thank you for joining us to mark this momentous occasion as we officially welcome the United Launch Alliance Delta II rocket to the Rocket Garden. I'd like to briefly introduce our speakers. Ron Forston, the Director and General Manager of Launch Operations at Un United Launch Alliance. Robert Cabana, NASA Kennedy Space Center Center Director. Tim Dunn, Launch Director, NASA Launch Services Program. Brigadier General Stephen Purdy, Jr., 45th Space Wing Commander and Eastern Range Director, Patrick Space Force Base, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. We are excited to welcome the Delta II, the ninth rocket to our rocket garden. It will be keeping company with other historic and remarkable rockets, including the original Delta Thor, Mercury Redstone, Mercury La Atlas, Gemini, Gemini Titan, Juno 1, Juno 2, Atlas Agenia, and the Saturn S1B. Thank you, United, United Launch Alliance, for making this amazing addition. They've been absolutely astounding to work with and a true partnership. This addition is timely as more people are visiting to learn all about space. Delta II is the entry point to our newest attraction opening in the first quarter of 2022, right behind me. Look for this exciting announcement in June. It's going to be something exciting. So it was strategically placed here to be right in front of our newest attraction. It is now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Robert, I'm sorry, Mr. Ron Forsen. Ron. What a beautiful day and what a beautiful rocket. This is, a, this is a great day. So on behalf of the team at United Launch Alliance, we're excited to be here today. This is a monumental occasion as the legacy of Delta II will be preserved here for years to come. Taking this place among the iconic giants here at the Rocket Garden. ULA would like to thank uh, NASA and the Kennedy Space Center Complex for partnership that we have to bring this rocket here. And uh, it, it, it just looks fantastic. This is really a great, great achievement here. So this is the final Delta II. And since it won't be launching, you know, the best thing to pay is the good thing, a better place for it to be than right here, uh, being preserved in, in this little fitting location here with all these other uh, iconic uh, rockets that we have here in this complex. So now that I really know what Delta II is all about, you know, it served as basically an industry workhorse for over 30 years, uh, including 155 missions, with the first one being uh, a GPS mission uh, on Valentine's Day on 19, in 1989, and then all the way through the last mission, which occurred in September, uh, excuse me, July of uh, 2018 with ISAT-2, and many of us were there for that monumental and, uh, and very uh, successful launch. So, so as you know, Delta II has been delivered a lot of significant missions for NASA, the Air Force, and our commercial customers. In particular for NASA, there's the Mars rover, Spirit and Opportunity, uh, the, the Phoenix, Mars lander, and as I mentioned before, ISAT-2. That's just one of the many significant accomplishments and missions that were launched on Delta II. For the Air Force, GPS. Can you think of a world today without GPS? I, don't, I can't. Well, Delta II is the reason we have it. So from national security to space exploration, the Delta II has changed what we know about the world we live in today. And it's affected all of our lives. We're proud to be here to open up this exhibit and look forward to the future generations who are going to be learning all this history, this rich history, that's been provided by this awesome rocket. So with that, I want to thank all of you for coming here, and now I'll turn it over to the NASA Kennedy Space Center Director, Bob Cabana, for comments. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Wow, looks great. So, first off, I want to thank uh, Tori Bruno and the amazing ULA team for uh, donating this uh, Delta II rocket to the Rocket Garden. What a great addition. And uh, this, that's a real rocket behind us. It could have flown in space, but instead, just like Atlantis, it's on its second career right now. And a lot of us end up on second careers, right? And uh, it, it's, on a, it's on a mission of inspiration 
for the future generations, all right? And uh, right in front of this awesome facility that we're going to have opening up, telling about the future of space uh, next year. So, again, my thanks to the entire uh, ULA team, to uh, the Kennedy Visitor Center for helping make all of this happen. It really looks great. Now, as much as I'd like to talk about the Delta II rocket, I want to introduce somebody that really knows the Delta II rocket. Throughout his career uh, in the Air Force and here at NASA, Tim Dunn, NASA's uh, Launch Services Program Launch Director, absolutely loves the Delta II, and he could tell you every mission in detail that it has flown. So, Tim, come on up here and share a little bit about the Delta II with us, would you? Thank you. So the words we all use to describe the Delta II rocket are words we use to describe the most honorable people among us. Reliable, steady, consistent, humbly carrying on. I think that is why we are all gathered together now to reflect and celebrate the role of Delta II in space launch history. For just shy of 30 years, Delta II carried the torch of space launch from its predecessor, Delta I. Some have wondered, what is it about this blue rocket that makes it so special? While the hardware is beautifully designed, while the missions have been amazing and varied, GPS that has changed our lives, weather satellites, mobile satellite telephones, space telescopes, trips to the moon, Mars, and Mercury, comets, asteroids, and countless spacecraft studying our beloved Mother Earth. Launching NASA's spacecraft from both Cape Canaveral's Complex 17 and Vandenberg's Slick 2, Delta II lofted such blockbuster missions as Mars, Pathfinder's Sojourner Rover, Stardust, the Sertive Spitzer Telescope, Messenger, Deep Impact, Grail, cutting edge weather satellites, NPP and JPSS-1, and of course, the Mars Spirit and Opportunity rovers, and that's just to name a few of the NASA missions. I believe the success of this rocket has left a huge ripple effect on the launch systems we have today. So on behalf of NASA, on behalf of the Launch Services Program, I would especially like to thank the team that is responsible for bringing Delta II to the Rocket Garden. The partnership of United Launch Alliance and Delaware North. Their investment and teamwork have preserved this piece of history, this piece of our space launch history that can now be studied and admired up close for generations to come. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Brigadier General Stephen Purdy, Jr., 45th Space Wing Commander and Eastern Range Director at Patrick Space Force Base and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Um, I like this rocket a lot. I've actually never worked this particular rocket before. I've worked its, its later Delta IV, Atlas V, uh, and then some of the Falcons. Uh, this rocket, though, I've always kind of been a little biased toward. The other rockets, we were talking about it before the uh, ceremony, they're kind of majestic. They're slow, and they, they take their time to get off the pad. This one's in a hurry to get its job done. This one moves. Ron mentioned a bottle rocket, and that's always my thought. As soon as this thing lights, boom, gone. Almost like it's impatient and it wants to get going. Uh, and I really like that kind of uh, mindset. It's just personal mindset, and I love kind of thinking of this rocket in that terms. Thank you very much, and we'll go on to the ribbon cutting. <laughs> 